See that wallet on that table? That's your money. But you're already at home and left it hours ago. You've realized it only just now. So the money is gone. You know many real estate pros leave money on the table when it comes to their real estate websites. Let's see in today's video how this real estate website from a Texan real estate broker does. I did a basic website conversion audit for this real estate website. You can have me do one for you too, by the way. And I found 15 things that can be improved and some even are hurting their conversions at this very moment. When you improve these things, they can often boost lead conversions. Oh, and three of these 15 things I would try to fix as soon as possible. So let's start with a basic user experience check. And the first impression I got was that Alex has a clearly structured homepage. There's a nice silent hero video in the background with enough contrast to make the hero headline visible. However, when you scroll down, there's a slight contrast issue in the footer area. I mean, well, not, not exactly the footer area, it's more here in this area. As you can see, the steps for the seller lead capture form are not as visible as they could be. You can fix this when you decrease the brightness of the background image here, or you substitute it entirely for one that has just more contrast, or you use some background shapes for the icons that create the necessary contrast. Well, anything that gets these steps more visible counts. Then the next one is the Alex areas, especially the titles. So the titles, for example, here, Austin, Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, San Antonio, especially Fort Worth, are not as visible as they could be. Again, you can improve this when you decrease the brightness of the background image of those little background images here. To fix this, look, when you hover over those images, you actually get the right brightness for the background image. So you could also use this same brightness level for when the mouse is not hovering over those little pictures or images or thumbnails. Another option is you just add some little background shapes to those titles so that the titles get enough contrast. The Alex knows section here sometimes feels like a lot of text when you don't add space between two sentences. This is even more so when you look at it on the mobile version. Let's just check for a second the mobile version. For example, the more you narrow it down, you see, the more it seems like a lot of text. So to improve readability, try to add spaces between sentences and it immediately gets easier to read. That's for the Alex knows section. Another thing I notice is that the, the subtitles, Alex knows, Alex areas are mainly well, they are centered, but what breaks the consistency is the review section. Here it's not aligned center anymore, but more on the left. So try to keep all centered so you can provide sufficient consistency in the layout. Then the next thing is one menu item in Best in Texas here. That's this one. Disrupts the consistency of the overall category of this menu item because when I visited the top menu and checked the menu items like elementary schools, wealthiest cities, etc. I expected an overview of what is best in Texas since the same menu displays elementary schools, etc. However, when you click on Best in Texas, it's a page about how Alex works. So best in Texas within the best in Texas menu is more of something for the about page, for example. How can you improve this? Well, you may want to consider eliminating it completely from there or change the content of the page best in Texas and use the content or merge the content from there within the about Alex page. Now back to the homepage. When I first visited the website, I first thought the subheadlines Alex knows and Alex areas were buttons. Actually, I I tried to click them. I, I had like I had like this this uh, urge to click, but there are not buttons. So to be less confusing in terms of what a visitor might expect, you may want to consider getting rid of the smaller sized uh, rectangle backgrounds so they don't appear like buttons. 
Or you could make the background col color for each section different so a user perceives that as completely separate section and then just use those headlines as headlines without the rectangle shaped background or you can change the whole design and make the rectangle wider so my brain and likely other brains no longer associated with the shape of a button to check the property search functionality and user friendliness i put myself into the shoes of a buyer prospect and made a search and i searched for homes in houston texas as you can see everything works as expected great you end up on a search results page with an overview of available properties in the desired area here we have a map view on the left and then we have a list view on the right the top area offers Great filters, you can order by price, beds, bath, property type and more. But then three things happen that likely hurt conversions. When you use the more filter, let's click more. There is no intuitive way back to the map view. I would expect when you click outside the area here, outside of the search filter area, it will close or that I find an X. Where is the X? Nothing, there's no X. To close it you only get out of it when you click on one of the other filter menu items like price that are smaller and don't cover the whole list view property list view on the right side well you can always use the browser back button but i think that's not the best idea and this would hurt conversions even more so not the best idea. To fix the situation, you may want to add the option or the functionality that when you click outside of those larger filter windows or layers that they close automatically and you are back to see the property results page. Now, the second thing that likely hurts conversion is you only get to see the property details when you click on the picture in this side area. I just found another way to close this, but it's not intuitive. It's not intuitive enough. You can close this large filter when you click again here. It's a good idea to have also the option to click outside of the layer and then it closes. Now again, the next thing I found, the second thing that likely hurts conversion is you only get to see the property details when you click on the picture on this side area like that. It takes a little bit, takes a little bit. Okay, but I first clicked several times in the blue area. I even slapped my mouse <laughs> since it's in the process of dying. So, but it wasn't the mouse. When I move over here, it shows me a clickable element, but only here it would open the property details or when you click on the picture. So, so to improve this, you may want to link directly to the property details page from this whole layer, not just here this link or the link in the photo. Now, the third thing I found that likely hurts conversions a bit more even once you find yourself on the property details page. Let's go to property details page. Wait for it. This will happen. You don't get to see the property details immediately, but instead you get a pop-up with a sales copy I wouldn't use. Why? One reason is it's addressed to both buyers and sellers. And why is that not optimal? I would assume it's more likely a buyer prospect who will use this property details page than a seller prospect. But being in buyer prospect shoes, I first want to see the property details. Imagine, maybe I was just about to find my perfect property in Houston and then pop-up distraction that also addresses seller prospects. So if you really need a pop-up on the property details page, I don't know, maybe it has worked for you and you generated leads. At least try to delay it a bit, maybe 10 to 20 seconds so that a buyer prospect will actually see the property details immediately or use it in an exit intent pop-up. Actually, I would use it as a general exit intent pop-up sidewide. Once the visitor wants to exit your page, it pops up. And in that case, if it's sidewide, then this sales copy that is used here would actually be okayish because you address both sellers, seller prospects and buyer prospects. Let's get back here to the home page. How do I close this? Oh, that's not easy to close. Not easy to close. Just found another one. Now, as long as you use an iPad Pro, let's get 
to the iPad Pro. See, as long as you use an iPad Pro, the website displays just fine. However, once you visit the homepage with an iPhone 12 Plus or a narrower display, it gets a bit messy. Let's see what I mean. iPhone 12 Plus. See, the hero title gets lost in the white space above. The good news, however, what seems to be resolved here is the contrast between the titles and the background images in the Alex areas. See, here. That's exactly what I suggested for the desktop version. So getting back to this issue here at the top, a web developer may want to look at this at the CSS media queries and adjust the margin according to device dimensions. If you want to increase your conversion rates for your real estate website, then mobile friendliness really is important and should be spot on. You know, roughly half of prospects of buyer prospects are using their cell phones, their mobile phones to search for properties. If it's not mobile friendly, then you may lose on those kind of buyer prospects. Now let's get to loading speed. So let's get to the page speed insights. And if we enter the URL, then you will see that loading speed insights look good on mobile and desktop. As long as you're not in the red, you're good to go. And mobile is always more tricky. Look, for example, I put in youtube.com, for example. Core Web Vitals assessment failed. So, well, again, it's tricky on mobile. And as long as you are not in the red, you're good to go. By the way, my website is currently in the mobile red zone, working on that too. Now let's look at some parts of the conversion funnel. That should always be part of a conversion audit, by the way. Well, at least the ones I do for clients always included. So let's check the effectiveness of some lead capture forms especially the seller lead capture form. Here it is. What's my home really worth? See the steps ex explaining the process to get the home valuation. Step one, enter property details. Step two, property details. Step three, property valuation. This could be more visible. Again, as I mentioned earlier, earlier in, the user in the user experience part of this video, there is not much contrast that helps visibility here. There is a, I don't know what it is. It's a plate. A white plate then some white item on top and some white books so it doesn't help very much when the font is white again to fix this you want to use a different background image or you could add again a circle shaped background to the icons so that you get a better contrast now let's enter some random street address from Houston, Texas. I found one, the Westheimer Road in Houston. So let's put it in here, click next. You may know it already, but the fewer form fields you use, the higher you can get the lead conversions. However, this can be a trap because the more form fields you use, the higher the lead quality can get. Just visit the an insurance provider's website and you will know what I mean. So it's a struggle between quality and quantity. And if you look at the lead capture form for seller prospect, it looks great. It's just three fields, full name, email, phone. However, 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 the disclaimer below the form is almost invisible because of the white font color again. That's because there is almost no contrast in the background. Some, this furniture in the background, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not convinced of the furniture in the background. So this can impact the trust a seller prospect needs to fill out the form. As a consequence, this can reduce the conversion rate. There are two improvement options here. Firstly, you can experiment with getting rid of one form field, which is phone number, asking for a phone number. So with one less form field, see if the conversions increase. But also keep an eye on the lead quality if it gets impacted by getting rid of one form field. Remember, the less form fields, the higher the leads can, higher the lead quantity can get, but also the lead quality can decrease. And as a second improvement, try to use a different background image or put the disclaimer that at the moment is below the form on the same layer as the form, but make the font black or something. So white background, Black font, perfect. Now the direct response sales copy check. Graphic designers don't like to hear that, but you could get away with 
a poorish user experience and great sales copy, but not so much with a great user experience and design and a crappy sales copy. So now we get into the direct response sales copy and how persuasive this real estate website is or could be. If you don't know, direct response sales copy is persuading seller and buyer prospects or prospects in general and in general with the written word to act on something. In short, it's selling with the written word. Kind of like mind control, but not that powerful. So let's get back to the beginning. Let's start with the USP, the unique selling proposition. Firstly, I like that they have defined a USP. It shows in the hero title and it's communicated via deep intelligence, genius, real estate. It's different from, from many other real estate websites I've seen across the web over many years, that's for sure. I like that they use AI for their real estate market data analysis. I found out about that in the about me section in the, on the about page, which they communicate in this hero title. That's what makes them different from other agencies. Now there is a but when I put on my direct response copywriter hat. Deep intelligence, genius real estate sounds good and fancy feels to me a bit like it could come from a marketing agency fancy slogans have their place don't get me wrong and i also know what they mean with these five words deep intelligence genius real estate however with my copywriter hat on and putting myself into buyer prospect shoes i actually don't know what it means in terms of benefits i may be wrong but i suspect that it was it could have been done by a marketing agency. Marketing agencies are usually used to do indirect response marketing or copywriting to increase brand awareness. The thing is, this indirect kind of marketing and sales copy is pretty hard to measure in terms of conversions. It can win awards for the agencies, but isn't aimed at generating a measurable direct response, aka generating leads directly. It's only a shot in the dark since I only did a basic real estate website conversion audit. So I could only do a short few second brainstorming session with that. But instead of the current hero headline, you could do something more benefit driven for buyer and seller prospects. Something like we take the guesswork out of buying and selling or buy like a genius, sell like a king. It's a bit more concrete and more benefit driven. Again, I am guessing here since I don't know anything about Alex's ideal buyer and seller prospects. In the more in-depth conversion audits I can do for clients there would be more research involved for that. Now let's get back to the CTA of the seller prospect capture form. The CTA is the call to action. This time we look at the sales copy. The first one looks good, it's just next. So again, put in the road, click on next. However, the second one could be better and be more benefit driven and individualized. Instead of using next again here, I would use something like send it now. Let's now check trust signals. That's things like reviews, testimonials, case studies, etc. And I like that they use reviews on their homepage. Here there are. However, they could be used more strategically for more persuasion power. You could pick relevant buyer reviews for the buyer prospect lead capture section above. That's where the property search is and display them in a carousel below the property search area. What I mean by a carousel, here you can see one, something like that. But only the ones where you see your USP mentioned, the broker's data-driven approach, for example. So let's get back to the site. Then also the what's my home really worth section. I would move up a bit before the reviews section starts and display handpicked reviews reflecting the USB that show the benefits offered. So there you have it. Just scrolling the homepage, I found nine improvements when it comes to user experience, three improvements when it comes to conversion funnels and three improvements when it comes to direct response sales copy. The urgent ones are the three conversion hurting UX issues in the property search, the mobile responsive issues 
in the above the fold section and the improvements that can be made around the seller lead capture form. If you also want to know where you could improve or boost your real estate website lead conversions, just let me know, hit me up on hackingrealestatemarketing.com, contact me and I can help you with that. And if you're interested in real estate lead generation in general and how AI can help you with that, you may also want to watch the next video. So that's it. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.